Well, I've got this old axe that I've had for quite a while and uh, just been hanging up out in my garage. It's got a, uh, about a 24, 25 inch handle on it. And I think I'm gonna try and turn it into something neat. Basically just been hanging around doing nothing. So let's make it look cool hanging around doing nothing. I'm trying to draw up different designs on the head of this thing to uh, cut out and in these different little areas here. Each one would be cut out of the ax. And if you, I guess, maybe look at that and imagine maybe how that would look cut out. That's one side. Another idea would be something like this. I guess, drop me a comment. Side one, side two. We'll see. got to go and start trying to pick that wedge out of there. Got that all cleaned out and uh, pretty even on both sides all the way down. Got a new wedge made. And looking at the engagement, it's already tight when this portion of it goes into the head of the axe. So anything more than that is, is a good wedge. I've got more than enough uh, extra gap distance here. So when I push the wedge in, it will definitely spread that out and make it nice and tight. And there's the handle. And what problem I had with it was it had a substantially large chip out of the end of this handle. So what I did was um, clamped it up in the mill here and machined out a V-notch so I could take and glue another piece of wood in there. But you can see I had to get very, very creative in uh, how I was clamping it up. And I used some very high dense foam it is tipped on an angle and rotated, and it is also raised on this end down here to get that thing at a point where I could cut a 90 degree notch in it and have the run out not go clear down the handle, but just enough to clean out the chip that was in there or the, the notch that was cut out of that. Got some wood here that I'm gonna go ahead and cut up handful of different uh, little block chips, if you will, and just see which one matches grain look best in that area. And we'll get it all glued and clamped in and then we'll trim and sand it as needed. go virtually unnoticeable hold it back can't even tell come up close and you can see the little bit of a witness line there and here and then in the end grain 
you can see it there, but don't really care about it being there because if it's hung up on the wall or whatever, you will never ever notice that chip in that handle. Been messing around with it here for a little while and tack welded a stand to it and what that's going to do is hold that thing flat and even i've measured from the base up to the sharp edge same with over here so it's completely even and flat when we proceed to the next process Well, my quick road trip brought me back to Phoenix Laser Solutions, and you guys uh, might remember this place from a video I did a while back on laser engraving my chainsaw bar. And we're gonna be on the water jet machine, and it's an Omax 6120 Jet Machining Center. We're gonna go through here, and we are going to water jet cut out a form on this, there's the water jet head. Here's the table. Pretty large machine. And they're putting uh, four by eight sheets of uh, anything on there right there. That's a piece of aluminum that they've water jetted out different shapes. And plastic, aluminum, steel, wood. This machine can cut it. It doesn't require any kind of electrical conductivity or anything like that. It's just plain water. Uh, under extreme high pressures and I'll get all that information from Chris when he gets back here so the uh, the water jets a pretty amazing tool to have um, it's not limited like I said to uh, being electrical conductivity like uh, a plasma cutter or anything like that so you're limited on plasma cutters as far as uh, the types of materials this particular machine there is really no limit to what you can cut. I know he's done foam, I know he's done rubber, plastic, uh, wood, and everything like that. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and scan off of a piece of paper that I drew out the form that I want on this. He scans it on like a copier machine, loads it into the program, and uh, makes sure it's all centered up and everything's gonna work right. He's picking and plotting points on the scanned piece of paper that I did what you can see right here he's uploaded it into the machine and he's just going through here and picking points on there and then it will uh, I guess create its own radiuses or plot points for where that uh, every transition is on the uh, blueprint if you will if you really want to call that a blueprint or not so he's programming in there to create a, a cutting path and one thing that we did in this center area is I shrunk down the center hole that's going to be in there because it left a very small web of steel here and up here that uh, would actually, I guess, maybe compromise the integrity of that steel as far as when I go to ahead and put the uh, handle back in it, that it might actually split that or that. So that's why I shrunk that down to give it a little more steel on each side of the top and bottom points of that. But... Uh, very quick process that literally only took him about two minutes to program that in and uh, create a, a cutting path.
custom water jetted axe head. We're back home at the workshop now here at my house and I've got to go ahead and remove this little bracket that I made and welded it to the axe head so we could machine that thing. Okay, I've got the axe head all roughly polished up because I've got to do a lot more work when I put those inserts in. So there's no sense in getting this really nice and smooth. I'm going to go ahead and put my wedge in and use some uh, boiled linseed oil on that. And that's what I used on the handle. And I'll also be putting it on the, the wedge and down in the slot here. Got that in as far as it's going to go. Uh, it's got a good hold in there. So I will go ahead and wipe that off and let it dry up a little bit and cut the rest of the remaining of that off. We'll go ahead and top that off with some more of the boiled linseed oil.
there you go. It's all finished. Handle's all sanded down. The chip's been fixed in it. Made my custom axe head on there and uh, did some water jet work on that. I got the final polish on it and that's more of a satin finish that I did. Another thing that I did was I did highly polish the two top edges of that. And I think you can see in the sunlight how those turned out. Got the uh, custom wedge I made in there. Got the inserts in it with uh, the two brass plugs that go in there. And boy, this thing sure turned out nice. It was the very first axe I've ever done. And uh, I guess I wanted to do some uh, different type of process of manufacturing this that uh, most people don't get to see. And that was that water jet down at Phoenix Laser Solutions. So I wanted to thank Chris and all the guys down there for allowing me to come in. and. Uh, I guess uh, we're going to end the video there. If you like the axe, let me know in the comments. If you would have changed something on it, let me know that as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you again on the next one. Thanks.